Welcome to the realm of spirits, where the lines between the living and the dead are blurred and eerie apparitions roam freely. From ancient civilizations to modern day societies, every culture has its own version of ghostly encounters. Welcome back to our channel where we are diving deep into the world of terrifying tales and ghostly encounters. Today we are exploring the chilling ghosts from Japanese folklore that will send shivers down your spine and make you sleep with one eye open. So grab your popcorn and get ready for a bone chilling ride. Imagine a world where winter isn't just a season, but a persona. A breathtaking, beautiful woman with a heart as cold as ice as she reigns over. Enter Yukiona, Japan's legendary snow woman, who could give Frosty the snowman a run for his money, minus the jolly happy soul. With her earth real beauty and deadly breath, she's not just a chill in the air, she's the embodiment of winter's enchanting yet perilous nature. Imagine winter as a coin, flipping between serene snowfall and blizzard wrath. Yoki Ona embodies this coin, sometimes showing heads as a guardian angel of snowy wilderness, and other times tales a frosty femme fatale. It's like she can't decide whether to wrap you in a chilly embrace or freeze you solid for accidentally stepping on her snowy lawn. This duality mirrors winter itself, a season of breathtaking beauty and perilous conditions, making Yukiona the ultimate symbol of nature's unpredictable temperament. In the frost-bitten tapestry of Japanese folklore, Yukiona flips between being an icy-hearted villain and a snow-draped heron, with the ease of a snowflake caught in a wind. Picture this. One tail spins a yarn of her leading lost souls to the warmth of their hearths, while others recount her freezing the unwary with a kiss of cold as a mother-in-law's embrace. It's this chilling blend of mercy and malevolence that makes her stories as unpredictable as winter storm in April. In the grand theater of Japanese culture, Yuki Ona is not just a frosty diva with a flair for the dramatic. She's a symbol thicker than winter coat. Representing winter's harsh embrace, she is a reminder that life, much like your fingers in January, can be breathtakingly beautiful yet curiously fragile. Her tales, serving as a cautionary whispers among the snowflakes, warn us of nature's icy allure and the thin ice upon which we tread. So the next time you're out in the snow, remember Yukiona's lessons, or you might just get more than cold feet. If Yukiona had a LinkedIn profile, it would boast an impressive career, spanning centuries in literature, art, and pop culture. She's the far seen muse of countless Japanese tales, paintings, and even anime where she oscillates between heart-stopping beauty and literally heart-stopper. Imagine her as a cool ant in the world of supernatural beings, always ready to steal the spotlight with her icy charm and chilling tales proving that even in the digital age, a good old-fashioned snow woman can still send shivers down her spine. Diving into the frosty fables of Yukiona, one can't help but to chuckle at nature's way of saying, respect my icy powers, or you'll end up a human popsicle. Her tales, more than just bedtime stories to scare kids into wearing their mittens, serves as a whimsical warning Admire winter's beauty from a safe, preferably heated distance. It's like Mother Nature's own version of Beware of the Dog sign, but instead it's Beware of the Snow Woman. Though Yoki Ono's chilling adventures, we are reminded to tread lightly through our frosty footprints. Least we wish to be in the next cautionary tale whispered in the cold, moonlit nights. And the grand tapestry of cultural lore 
Yuki Ono stands as a frosty beacon, reminding us that winter isn't just about snowball fights and hot cocoa. She's the embodiment of nature's breathtaking beauty and its icy dangers. A chilly reminder to respect the delicate dance between humans and the natural world. Through her tales, we are not just entertained. We are wrapped in a wintry warning to tread lightly on the snow. Least we wish to become part of her legendary legacy. Imagine strolling down a moonlit path, the air crisp with the scent of cherry blossom. When suddenly the friendly stranger you've been chatting with turns to bid you good night, and bam, no face. Just this smooth, featureless expanse where the face should be. Welcome to the eerie world of Naparabu, Japan's legendary faceless ghost. These spectral pranksters have a knack for blending into society only to reveal their true, unnerving nature when you least expect it. Diving into the shadowy pools of Japanese folklore, the Naparabu first splashed onto the scene in the Edo period, a time when tales were as plentiful as sushi at a buffet. These faceless wonders were the original catfishers, embodying the fear of deception long before online dating made it cool. As symbols of illusion of appearance, they remind us that sometimes the scariest thing isn't a ghostly visage, but a lack of one. Imagine the Nopira Bull as the ultimate undercover agent in the supernatural world. With the ability to morph into any Tom, Dick, or a Haku might encounter. One minute there's a sweet old lady offering you directions. The next, they're a faceless enigma, leaving you questioning your sanity. This shape-shifting powers not only allows them to blend into human society with the ease of a chameleon on a kaleidoscope, but to also choose the perfect moment to drop their facial facade, turning any mundane interaction into an unforgettable encounter. Imagine the sheer, unadulterated panic of discovering your new friend is more canvas than a person. This pivotal moment when Napirabu drops their human disguise is akin to finding out your blind date is actually a mannequin. Witnesses are often left in a comedic limbo, questioning if they've accidentally wandered in a supernatural prank show. This face-off, quite literally, blurs the line between reality and the otherworldly, leaving onlookers to wonder if they've had one too many sakes or if the world is far stranger than they thought. Aside from their knack for facial hide-and-seek, Napirabu boasts a repartee of supernatural skills that would make any magician green with envy. They're like the Houdinis of the spirit world, conjuring illusions and warping perceptions with ease of a seasoned trickster. Victims might find themselves ensnared in a web of confusion, their minds a merry-go-round of fear and madness. It's all fun and games until someone loses their face. Or, in this case, see someone else lose their face. Delving into the emetic intentions of Parabu is akin to trying to solve a Rubik's Cube in the dark. Are they malevolent spirits on a mission to scare the living daylights out of us? Or merely supernatural jesters poking fun at our all-too-human fears? Perhaps they're the universe's way of saying, gotcha, forcing us to confront real horror, our own insecurities. Either way, these faceless specters remain the ultimate riddle, wrapped in mystery inside of an enigma. The Nopira Boo, with their perchance for facial vanishing acts, tap into the primal fear deeper than just a ghostly encounter. They poke at the soft underbelly of our psyche, reminding us that the true horror might just be the unknown lurking within us. It's like looking into a mirror and seeing nothing staring back at you. A chilling reminder that sometimes the scariest monsters are the ones we conjure in our own minds. In the cultural tapestry of Japan, these facial specters are not just tales to tell in the dark, but reflections of the human condition wrapped in a spooky, 
faceless package. In the whimsical world of Japan, Nipirabu are the chameleons of folklore, tweaking their spook tactics from region to region. In Kyoto, they might play the polite, faceless tea server, causing guests to spit out their matcha in shock. Meanwhile, in rural Haikoto, they prefer the silent, snowy approach, blending into blizzards before revealing their smooth visages, giving skiers more chills than the cold. Each locale adds its own flavor, proving that even ghosts adhere to the motto, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. In the grand tapestry of Japanese folklore, the Naparabo stands out not just for their lack of facial features, but for the questions they leave in their wake. Are they mere figments of cultural imagination? Or do they whisper deeper truths about the unknown faces we pass daily? As we chuckle at their antics, let's not forget to peer a little closer into the shadows. For the real mystery might just be the stranger smiling back at us in the dark. Get ready to dive headfirst into the world of Akamento, aka the Red Cape, a ghostly figure that haunts public restrooms and leaves unsuspecting visitors trembling in fear. This chilling urban legend has been haunting audiences for generations, with a history steeped in Japanese folklore and storytelling traditions. From its mysterious origins to its spine-tingling descriptions, the legend of Akamento has evolved over time into a complex and terrifying tale that continues to captivate and terrify people today. In this video, we'll peel back the layers of this haunting legend, exploring its cultural significance and its modern interpretations in popular culture. So grab your courage and maybe some ghost repellent spray as we unravel a chilling mystery of Akamento and step into the eerie world of Japanese urban legends. Just remember, you might want to hold on until you get home. Urban legends are wild, right? Akamento is no exception. This dude in a red cape with his face all hidden creeps people out big time, especially in bathrooms. He pops up out of nowhere and makes you choose between red or blue paper. And let's just say neither option is a good one. People freak out over what happens if they pick the wrong color, sparking all sorts of gossip and fear. The story of Akamento has changed a bunch over the years, depending on where you are in Japan. Each version adds a twist to the spooky tale, making it all more unsettling. These legends tend to shift with the times, showing how our fears and belief change with society. From ancient folklore to modern takes, Akamento keeps us on our toes with its creepy antics. Urban legends like Akamento have a way of sticking around, scaring new generations as they go. Whether you believe in this ghostly figure or not, messing with him is definitely not for the faint of heart. Just be careful out there and maybe think twice before accepting any paper choices from a mysterious cape stranger. Just say. Why do we enjoy scaring ourselves silly with stories of Akamento? Maybe it's the thrill of getting our hearts racing or facing our deepest fears head on. This spine chilling urban legend taps into our primal instincts and keeps us on edge, reminding us that the line between the living and the dead can sometimes get a bit blurry in the scariest of ways. In the rich tapestry of Japanese folklore, Akamento stands out as a truly a haunting figure that plays on our fears of the supernatural and the unknown. Passed down through generations, this chilling story serves as a cautionary reminder to be wary of wandering into shadowy realms where spirits lurk. Akamento isn't just a ghostly tale. It's a reflection of our cultural fascination with all things creepy. From movies to magna, Akamento has made a big splash in modern pop culture. 
This cloaked phantom in crimson continues to captivate audiences with his bone-chilling legend and hair-raising tricks. Whether making a terrifying appearance in a horror movie or popping up in a video game, Akamento's legend remains strong in the digital age. In the digital age, Akamento is a ghost with the most, haunting online forums and social media with spine-tingling stories and debates. It's like a virtual campfire where enthusiasts swap tips on dodging the Crimson Cape Phantom's wrath, keeping the legend alive and well. In the realm of urban legends, Akamento is king, scaring the pants off anyone from ghost hunters to scaredy cats. So beware of red capes in dimly lit places. This ghostly figure is not to be messed with. In the end, Akamento's enduring legend proves that we just can't resist a good scare, even in the digital era. Its spooky presence in Japanese culture serves as a reminder of our fascination with the supernatural and the power of a good ghost story. Whether you see it as a warning or as entertainment, Akamento's legacy continues to chill and thrill those brave enough to delve into the mysterious depths. And there you have it, folks, a glimpse into the terrifying ghost from Japanese folklore that will make even the bravest of souls quiver in fear. Remember to keep your wits about you and never venture into the darkness alone, for you never know what otherworldly entities may be lurking in the shadows. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, stay spooky, my friends.